Back in the late 1960s, Dodge needed to find a way to get more speed out of their stock Charger race cars to turn their fortunes around on NASCAR super speedways. So the Dodge engineers began experimenting with some aerodynamic add-ons. And what they came up with was this, the 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona and its crazy 18-inch pointed nose cone and massive two-foot tall spoiler. The look was outrageous, but it worked. The Daytona won its first ever NASCAR race and went on to help Dodge dominate the NASCAR circuit over the next two seasons. And in May 1970, it became the first stock car to break the 200 miles an hour barrier on a closed course at Talladega. What we want to find out today is just how well that crazy aero kit actually worked. So we brought this funky disco red and white Charger Daytona with us to the Ace Speed Labs wind tunnel in Oshawa, Ontario. For comparison, we've also brought along a stock 69 Dodge Charger and a 2015 Charger Hellcat, and we're going to put all three through the paces inside the Ace Speed Labs wind tunnel. What we're going to be looking at is front and rear lift and drag. Those would be the main ones. Well, the problem area is we're actually close separation over the front end of the hood. You can see that it, it's there, and that's tending to give it lift when it should be putting, pointing down. There is some flow separation off the A-pillars, which in, in that year they were called drip panels, and they're just protuberances that cause flow separation, hence drag. That's not the shape of the rear. The rear glass is actually inward. So the flow separates. We're looking at some of the smoke flow and you can see it literally tears off from the top and never reattaches. So that's a big source of drag. The downforce on the rear Went up, which means it'll be more stable. Surprising thing was the, the negative downforce or lift on the front was enormously reduced, which means it's more stable on the front as well. The drag went way down, and this is because of the uh, rear windshield angle being now flush with the flying buttress so that the flow stays attached. So that was a huge change. First thing is that the drag is way down, so that means the fuel economy is better. Second of all, the lift is hugely lowered. The other thing is that on the rear, there's a bit more downforce, which was achieved just by simply having a small spoiler on the end. So, what did we learn today? The Charger Daytona was leaps and bounds ahead of the stock Dodge Charger. While the stock Charger may have been a good-looking automobile, it wasn't exactly the most steady car at high speed. The Dodge Charger Daytona, with that giant nose cone and giant rear spoiler, was a lot more steady. When we compare the Charger Daytona to the Hellcat, the numbers actually aren't that far apart. Of course, the Charger Hellcat looks like a family sedan, because it is. And it doesn't need that giant rear wing or nose cone to achieve the kind of speeds that the Charger Daytona did back in 1969.